Hi there, this is Matthew Peters, the mobile video guy, and today I'm going to show you how I set up my studio. Now, it's a very simple studio. Uh, you can do the same thing at home, and I'm going to show you how to do it very inexpensively. And the reason you're going to want to do this is because it's going to really allow you to control and standardize the video process. And you're going to be able to just pop your camera right up in front of you and start recording with the lights on. So to begin, let's talk about one of the most important ingredients is light. Um, we can start very basic with these lights right here. Now these lights right here are called uh, either a chicken brooder light or a utility light. And basically they're very simple lights made of aluminum and they have an on off switch right here. You're going to want that on off switch because it's going to allow you to, it's just going to save you a little bit of time and you're not going to have to plug and unplug things to turn them on and off. Those run about uh, $7 a piece and then I get a bulb for them, which is uh, roughly $9 a piece. And the bulb I use is uh, a daylight bulb. And the reason you want to use a daylight bulb, I, because I use daylight bulb for everything, these are compact fluorescents. All right, so if I have uh, a CFL or compact fluorescent light kit with this type right here, I'm going to go into just a minute, um, those are going to all be using uh, compact fluorescents. You want to use a daylight quality bulb, and they are going to be running a color temperature of between 5,500 degrees Kelvin and 6,500 degrees Kelvin for that bright white light. I really like it because um, it makes my background turn really white, and I don't have that yellowish tinge that you may with incandescent lights. Now, there's a, a few things you want to know about compact fluorescence. They're actually the reason why you want to go all CFL or compact fluorescence for everything. Um, first of all, it's a very low power consumption. This 200 watts is a 200 watt equivalent, basically, but it is only uses or consumes 42 watts of electricity. That allows me to put all these lights that you see here um, on one circuit. Now, if I were to try to do this with incandescence, like I rent a light kit from a local uh, photography or video place, uh, I'd have to split it up because it's just way too much power to be on one circuit. You'd be just breaking the circuit breaker time and time again. So I highly recommend this. Um, the other thing is they stay cool. So you can have them on all day and uh, you take your breaks, come back, and the set is not all hot. Now I've been on sets before where um, we have the lights on in a small room. It just gets to be like 90 degrees in the room. Every time the camera turns off, we turn off the lights just to keep it a little bit cool. So they're cool. And then the other thing, which is really important when you're starting to do more of these, is if you ever have to replace one, you don't have to order it online. You don't have to go down to your, your uh, you know, photography store and uh, pay a lot of money because you're buying at retail. You can just go down to Home Depot or your other home supply store and get these. Um, so like I said, these are about $9. Now, once you're ready to go from the utility lights to a light kit, you can get something like this that you see here. These are called soft boxes. This is a two-point light soft box. This kit cost me $120 shipped to my house. Now, the reason why it's so inexpensive, and if you were to start uh, getting a two-point uh, two lighting kit from uh, even online, and it were incandescent, you'd be paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars. The reason is the quality of the construction. Now, this is $120 because the quality is, is pretty, pretty low grade. It's pretty low quality. And the reason they can do that is because the incandescent bulbs don't put off a lot of heat. Now, I can keep this covered up for hours, and it's not going to overheat. Um, the construction is plastic, all right? And then this is very flimsy material. Keeps it lightweight if you want to pack it up and take it with you. I was just down in Florida. I took the light kit in my, my uh, suitcase. It was very simple to pack away. And uh, you have this diffuser here that really softens that light. That's why they call it a soft box. You're not going to get the harsh shadows as you would without something like this in it. Now, there is a difference between this right here and this uh, other than cost. So this is, cost me $16 to have the, the, um, the compact fluorescent light bulb and the, and the, uh, the utility light. But, uh, the quality is just slightly different, and you can be um, you can put uh, different types of, of coverings on these to give it a softer look. But really, they are uh, a great light, and I would say start with this if you don't know what you want to go into. If you want to spend a little bit more, go ahead. These are the um, the Still Shot Twos right here. This light kit. This is what the bulb looks like. 
Now the thing with this bulb is it's a 125 watts, it's 5,500 degrees Kelvin, and um, these are about 30 to $40 a piece, and you have to order them. I haven't found them locally um, where I could get them. So uh, that is something that's, it, you always want to have one on hand in case you, one does go out or if it, it drops and you break a bulb. So that's something to think about as well. Now, before I go into audio, I do want to say something about how you have your, your camera mounted. You see right here I have an iPod Touch mounted onto a tripod. Tripods, this one right here is about $300. You can get tripods for as little as $15 at Walmart or Target or something like that. Um, one thing you want to look at in selecting a tripod is that it gets up to five and a half feet, six feet, something like that when it's completely extended. Um, because then you're not going to be looking down at your, at your camera. And uh, that's just something I, I want to say. So you may have to spend about 30 bucks on a tripod. And then you need some kind of mount. Now, I created this mount right here, and my son and I um, do sell these, but I want to show you what you can get on Amazon or eBay is they have them for smartphones. And these are very simple. I'll have a, a, a picture of this so you can see what they look like, but it's, it's a universal mount. The one thing about buying mounts online is they're, a lot of times when they're universal, you need to make sure that you have access to the ports. Like if you want to plug in a microphone or if you want to have power um, going to your smartphone as you're recording, you want to make sure that you have access to them. So that's really the one thing I'd keep in mind because you don't have the, another way to um, screw your tripod into uh, a mount to get into your, uh, into your smartphone or your iPad or what have you. The one that I, I put together is uses a suction cup and a clamp. You can kind of see it if I do it like this. And uh, it also, that, that clamp is great. If you don't have a tripod, you can clamp it on things like a, um, onto a door or something like that. And you can also clamp any kind of notes you want to go off of. You can clamp that right below the lens. It's really handy. Um, but let's go right into audio. Now, the reason why you want to consider having an external microphone is because uh, if you are using just the built-in microphone, you're going to get a lot of room noise. If you were to hear what this sounds like right now, it would sound pretty bad being so far away. You'd get a lot of the room noise. I would sound very distant. It's going to be distracting. It's going to distract from your message. So there's two microphones I recommend people who are just starting out. Um, both of them are by Audio-Technica, very standard microphones. This is a lavalier microphone. It's what I'm wearing right now, and I have another one right here. This is the uh, ATR35S, and uh, this is about $20 to $24 online. I recommend if you're going to go ahead and get one, get two, and then you can get a splitter, and then you can have two people on camera and both being mic'd up for you know, $45 bucks with the shipping, $50 with shipping. It's really worth it. Gets a, this is what you're hearing right, right now is this. This is the uh, 35S. Now this right here is a shotgun style microphone. This is if you don't want to have anything on you, but you just want to have it right off the screen. So if this were my camera right here, I would definitely check it, you know, make sure it's not on the screen. You don't want to have that there, but I'd have it right about down here. You point it directly at the sound source. And when I say directly, it, it's got to be directly at it because the pickup pattern is very, very tight. So I, you'd want to point it directly at person's mouth or the sound source because if it's a little bit off access, access I should say, um, it's not going to pick it up very well. It, what it does is it cuts out a lot of the room noise and just focuses right on that sound source. This is the ATR55. This is again Audio-Technica. It runs off um, a AA battery and uh, they are about $55 or less. You can get them on both eBay and Amazon. And uh, the other one, the ATR35S, uh, runs off of like a, a watch type battery. So I recommend people go ahead and get a few of those batteries. When you're going to start doing a long shoot, make sure you change out the battery before. You know, they're going to be $2 a piece or whatever. But just make sure you always have a fresh battery so you don't lose your audio halfway through. And then if you're going to be using any microphone, it's vital. The only way the microphone will work is if you have one of these. And this is a connector. I got this from kvconnection.com. I have the link down there below. But what they do is they specialize in connections for different devices. So if you have an iPhone, iPod, iPad, Android, um, other tablet, uh, you can look up your device on their website, and they'll tell you which connector to get. And expect to spend about $20 to $25, depending on your device, 
for this. Very rugged, very good quality. I wouldn't recommend getting something off of Amazon or eBay yet. Some of the stuff they have on there, I would I just say the quality is not there yet. But these guys really know what they're doing and uh, go to KV Connection to get this connection connector if you do want to use an external microphone. All right, so the last thing I want to talk to you about is backgrounds. Now the background I have here is, is a little more involved, but what I'll tell you right off the bat is you just want to make sure you have a, um, a background that doesn't distract people. Not You don't want to have movement or a lot of uh, colors and, and uh, you don't want to have people walking back and forth behind you and such. Uh, you don't want to be shooting in front of a window where there might be someone mowing the lawn behind you or something like that. So what I recommend is just a very plain backdrop that can be a white wall or a solid colored wall if you want. You can have it in a living room or something, but you really just want to make sure it's, they're focusing on you. Um, you don't want them to be focusing on what's going on behind you. So start with a white wall. If you want to bump up to something else, I'd recommend getting something like this, which is just a white sheet. Uh, this is a piece of cloth that I got at a fabric store, and I have grommets across the top to, to hold it up. And if you're going to be using cloth, don't put the wave in it. You don't want to have that wave there because it's going to lower the, the quality. It's going to look a little bit tacky. Um, so what I would do is recommend is you, you make it taut so it's a, a very um, flat surface. And then when you put your bright lights on it, it's going to blow that out. So it's going to be just a bright white or whatever the color is you're using. Some people like black. But either way, just make sure you have it taut. And then you put a lot of light on it. And if it's black, you take all light off of it and put it on you. And uh, the third one I recommend is this is called a, um, a sweep, all right? And they call it a sweep because it starts at the wall and it goes all the way onto the floor and there's no corner. So you could basically I could light this so you don't see anything. It just looks like I'm standing in uh, limbo where there's, there's, no, there's very low shadows. It's just like I'm, I'm standing out in the middle of nowhere. And um, this right here is a piece of linoleum. And the linoleum I got as a remnant at Home Depot for about $120. And I put a piece of wood across the top, stapled it on there, and I put uh, three hooks, and I just hooked it up onto the ceiling. Um, if you were to see this linoleum on the other side, it's a wood grain. Like I said, I got it as a remnant. It was just uh, basically, I have 12 feet wide by 16 feet. You don't need to go that long. I just wanted to have that um, all the way past the camera so I could do a full shot if I wanted to, all the way from my head to my feet, kind of as you're seeing it right now. So with this, um, once it's, once it's up, you just leave it up. This would be great to put in a garage, basement, second bedroom, or whatever. But um, this is something I like to, to have. So I have the four lights across the top and two lights on the bottom to light it up. Um, you can do the same with any background, backdrop <laughs> drop you have. And uh, like I said, it's $120, but it's well worth it if you want to move into going to the next step or the next level in your production quality. So that's pretty much it. This is you know, my setup here. With If you go from the lights to the backdrop to the tripod and everything, you can get into this under $300. You can have everything, your, your lights, and uh, I'd say probably $250, depending on how you put it together. And you can have a full studio that you can be proud of and make some great videos with it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them below this video. I'd be happy to help you out. Thanks so much for watching.